you know, I, I posed the question right here. Are you getting the new Steam Deck OLED? Uh, yeah. So I want one. I really want one. I don't know. Because what I want to do is buy the lowest tier, but that one's not available in OLED. Right. You no, have, to get, the, you have to get the middle yeah, tier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, which I get it. But I think that was 500, isn't it? Let me see. It's still a decent unit. I mean, it's not OLED, I guess. Oh, but yeah. It's still pretty nice screen on it. Just the same. And if you don't have it, do you know? Oh, and it's a little bigger. It's almost half an inch bigger. Yeah, that's more than a whole centimeter. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, 90. Hold on. It's got a better... Wait a minute. <clears throat> Hold up. It's got a bigger... This is not <laughs> just an OLED screen, dude. Oh, no. No, no. The OLED one is... is it's a vast improvement. Yeah. It's a, it's a big... It, it Actually, the internals are different, too. It's worth a hundred. It's a, it's worth a hundred fifty bucks. It is worth worth it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is uh, Steam well, Deck one point five essentially. Oh, and it's a it's an updated CPU too. Yes. Updated CPU, better Wi Fi, better battery. Mm-hmm. Okay, a longer cable. I don't guess we can put that one in the list. Whatever. I mean, it's pretty long um, now. OLED display and almost a half inch increase in the display mm-hmm. size and the ninety. Hertz refresh rate. Yep. Yeah. It's uh it's supposed to do HDR. And HDR? Coming up in this episode, Leo makes me a luscious official standings for a browser. We strum some reverberations focus on the hq focus on the sounds and forecast the future hello and welcome to linux user space i'm dan and i'm leo lush 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 a slush lush 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 slushy of lush yeah so uh yeah, okay. Context. I've always wanted a really, really short domain name, but like the two letter domain names are stupidly expensive. Yes. And they the single are. letter domain names are even worse. Yeah. But, you know, what are the other options? A three letter domain name. And somehow, some way, we got our hands on one. Nice. Uh, we are now the proud owners of L U S dot S. H. And I like dot sh a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. Because um if you've ever written scripts, there's a good chance that you have uh added a file extension of dot sh to the end of them. And I feel like that is a it's a that's a pretty good way to um a pretty good something to have for I, the show. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're your less shell script. Yeah, just run us in the background, and we'll do some stuff for you. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, uh, SH is also short for show. Yeah. And if you look at uh, linuxuserspace.show, it is just a really super truncated version of the original domain name, too. So I like that a lot. It fits in the script way. It fits in the short show way. But it also fits in the short way it does which is the original reason i wanted the smallest domain name i could possibly get my hands on and and so like i don't know easy for me to remember things by you know putting some words with with letters so if you want to try to remember using you know you all those letters uh i like using ssh aha yeah if you take the punctuation out of there that's what you got so, mm-hmm. so I think I'm just super excited that we have a super duper short domain name now that we can do whatever we want to with. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just have it. Like I like it. Right now, it just points to linuxuserspace.show. dot show. So, if, Which you, is if you type it cool. in, <laughs> if you type it in, it just takes you there for now. And it, and it will work. Yep, you'll get places. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, what is if if all I want to do is run like a redirection type service kind of like kind of sort of like what we do right now we do we and we, we could do that yep 
Yeah, we have fun with uh, with the weird keywords at the end of Linux uh mm-hmm. with, you know, we have like OnlyFans and stuff. Maybe that's all I want to do with it. I don't know. But... Well, you think about it. Yeah. Because we have... We, we link to a lot of stuff. We talk about a lot of things and, and, you know, maybe not link to every single article or something like that, but to link to some of the most important things sure. that we talk to uh, or that we that we talk about or just be like a link shortener altogether. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with it. So if you have... Possibilities are endless. They're, they're just endless, right? Yeah. My, my first thought was like, well, we could just, you know, lust.sh slash 409 would be you know, for this work. show. It will work. Right. It will work. Yeah. Yeah. Will I I don't know if you type in the lust sh thing if it'll work immediately, but you know, I don't have that on there right now. But um, you know, that I think in the very near future will probably work. Oh, I bet it uh, will. If I'm, I'm, if I'm going to try it now. I'm going to try oh, it. You got you got I don't think, you got me questioning. Well four oh nine doesn't exist yet. We're recording well, it right yeah, now. Yeah, right. I know but four oh eight that's might. what I'm but saying. I don't, I don't no. No, that would be too cool. That would be way too cool. There's no way that works. Oh, my God, it works. (laughs) (laughs) My God, it works, he says. Yes, of course it does. (laughs) I don't have to do anything? Hold on. It's done like dinner, Leo. It's done. Stick a a fork in that. It's already set. We did the hard work. Wait a minute. I I I promise you, watcher. (laughs) How does that already work? Because That's you pointed cool. it at our domain and then like I know, else, but like it's all set. My I, I just had this assumption that it would just drop off everything after the after the slash or something. Why nope. why does that work? That's an interesting question. No, no, that, no. So it just goes. It goes to the redirector and and, and job done. What? hmm That's cool. Okay. Well, if you're listening you're to welcome. this right now, then you could check out the current show notes at Lus dot sh slash 409 what you probably don't need to look that up since you're in the you're you're already watching the show wait so that means that the other redirectors work too absolutely no yeah sure they do all right i've blown blown leo's mind with with dns magic here yeah i mean thanks for tuning in (laughs) wow that's cool you're welcome. Yeah, I I just had this idea that that yeah, all... those bits would be stripped off during the redirection process. No, nope, all fired up, ready to go. Oh, that could have been very bad, depending on where I sent that to. Maybe. I'm glad I sent it to our website. Yes, thank you for that. Yeah, that's good. It, well, that's, that's all set now. Yes. Yeah, thank me for that. Thank you for setting all this up in the background. Wow, that's too cool. I'm just still so look. Look, he's just... all giddy, giddy up. <laughs> I I don't even I didn't even think to try it. I didn't even think to actually test that out because I was sure that was not going to work. Okay. Boom. Um, yep. Boom. Huh. I love cool. it. I love it. Yeah. No. If you look at the show notes, okay, you can't look at the show notes. You don't see the same show notes I see whenever you go to lust.sh slash four hundred nine. But I That's had true. a bit down at the bottom talking about how like don't worry, hang on. I'll get it working hey, and stuff. Hang on. I got it working for you. I don't even I don't even have to read any of that. Nope, I don't even no have break, to look no at break that. No break and no sweat. Nope. Got just, it. Just just delete that bullet point altogether. Okay, next topic. We're done. So getting into the feedback early. Um we got more feedback later, but this one is one that I felt like we were gonna take some time on. Mm. It's a contentious topic for some. It it is, and it was. I don't think it was meant to be. No, uh, no. When, when you when and you I, read and the I don't full, take it that way, right? Yeah, when you read the full context of the comment and everything else, like it, it seems like a very cool comment. So, mm-hmm. um, but it is a very contentious topic overall. So you know, I feel like this was written with the best of intentions. But a couple episodes ago, uh, we w- which was monster in the middle. We talked a little about Ubuntu and how both Dan and I were on twenty three ten. Uh, Dan, you were running Lubuntu, right? Was it Lubuntu or was it Kubuntu? Well, I, w- I was running Zubuntu because we were doing oh, XFCE, right. and I-, I had tested some Lubuntu stuff too. Okay, as well. so, so yeah, a couple a couple different flavors. Yeah. All right, and I was on Ubuntu proper, mm-hmm. but Daniel, no relation, uh, asks this: Aren't you guys a-, a bit fed up with Ubuntu? 
with all this forcing of snaps on users and wanting to put ads in the terminal and telemetry to the OS, I know I am. Which is sad because historically Ubuntu has done a lot for Linux. I just don't want to use a system where I'm forced to do something I don't want to by the maker of the distro. That still seems anti-freedom to me. Hence, I've ended up on Linux Mint Debian Edition because both Cinnamon and Debian are 100% community-based and 100% user freedom respecting. And it's been working great. Absolutely no issues. I, I'd like to take this bit by bit because I think, I know I do, I'm sure Dan does, um, Have ha, we have a lot to say on each of like the sentences because <laughs> there's a there's a lot each yeah the the way this is broken out i think yeah we want to probably answer each question and statement yeah. okay all right dan are you fed up with ubuntu no i am not it, it's a corporation i think um they mm. have some yeah so they have some interest in in what they do and the way they deliver things however i think uh you know, I get to benefit from some of those things, so I'm I'm cool with it. I guess that's where I'm going. That's that's where I'm going to start this off. And yeah, I I feel like in in a very similar vein that I I think maybe some of it is a little bit of brand loyalty, man. Because I I started on Ubuntu early, early on. It wasn't it wasn't like Hori Hedgehog mm. early. I think I had I think I knew about Ubuntu at the time. Right. I think I was playing around with different Linux distros and may have stumbled upon it but i certainly didn't use it as a daily up until maybe it was 804 yeah had to have been about 804 the timeline seems about right for that even still i think ubuntu like all companies tries a whole lot of different things mm -hmm. and i think more than getting fed up with it i think i'm i'm proud of them for trying stuff that yeah, even if they don't succeed. And they have not. There's a, a bunch lot. of things, yeah. They, and so they've put a lot of money into that, right? Yeah, and, you know, y you saw it. And you know what's, what's really so funny? I really hate the argument that it's like, um, oh, the U the Unity fans didn't show up until Ubuntu got rid of the Unity stuff. I, like, I think no, it's, those, more, those... it's more than that, though. Like, And what you don't know is it's, it's a lot of work maintaining your own yeah. desktop environment, right? But to the people that were fans of Unity, like they didn't really have, and this is just people in general. Nobody yeah. speaks up when things are working. Right. Nobody says anything right. except for except for you know people that obviously don't like it. Um, but the people that that are fine with it usually don't say much of anything. So the fans yeah. were always there, and they didn't show up until they got it got thrown out. And then now they're inconvenienced, and so now they start speaking up, and it's like, well, I like Unity, right? So Ubuntu has had. A whole lot of missteps, and I think getting rid of Unity may have actually been one of them. Maybe. I'm not sure. Like, So I feel like they carried over the same look and feel, which is mostly what people are interested in. Um, yeah. In, in, in what they have today with GNOME. They like, don't have the coolest feature, the HUD? which was the HUD. No, man. you're right. They don't. But I mean, and other than that, though, like putting that aside, right? That's a feature, I would say. The mm -hmm. look and feel is really pretty similar, right? I mean, they tried it it, they tried to make it close, and and the transition was they succeeded smooth yeah. is as smooth as a transition can be, I think. Well, because they do all the crazy stuff in between, and mm -hmm. then they drop an LTS, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, yay, more of the same," right, you know? Right, right. But it's like, but that's the point, right? You're not exactly. supposed to feel all the pain on the long term release because that's the one that they're going to support forever. You're supposed to feel the pain in the three interim releases leading up to it, and well. Yeah, and and I think we saw some stats a few years ago where very few people actually run on the interim releases to feel that pain in the first place. So, yeah. Anyway, um, so I I don't think so. I I think I think they're trying some things that that's a good point. Are I don't know that they're that bad, but well, I mean, you you don't know until you try. I feel like as is some of it, right? Yeah. So, but I, I guess I don't want to say too much because of the next thing that's right. that's coming up, which is the the forcing of snaps. Now, I think this one was the most controversial and the most recent of weird Ubuntu things that have happened. 
Um, and it started with, uh, I can't remember exactly the version that it started, but it's when they ripped out the Firefox Deb. And then when you tried to install the Firefox Deb through apt, they snuck in the snap. And, and sneaking yeah. it in, it, it actually said it, if you did it through the terminal, it straight up told you what was going to happen. And Firefox, for the longest time, has had a way to download the tarball, which actually, Dan, you reminded me of yeah. last episode or the one before that. A couple, and, couple and they times provide ago. instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they provide instructions on how to just m let Firefox maintain it so that it, you know, you don't have to use the snap. So exactly. there, there was a way around that at the time. But anyway, still the is. forcing gotta, the snaps. On so, yeah, for, forcing, I feel like, yes, um, every distro does some forcing of what they feel is the experience they want for everyone, right? So yeah. that is is just the way it is. And so Canonical, and by extension Ubuntu, pushing Snaps, which is their technology, I feel like if they don't, are they really doing their job in a way, right? So if they're not pushing yeah. their technology yeah. versus dog fooding True. the stuff, like are they really are they real what are what are they doing? Right. Yeah. And so um I feel like they need to do that. That's that's uh that's part of a business and yes, they have a higher authority to answer to than something that's community based where everyone gets a vote and you know, the community uh, gets is the to higher choose. authority just mark? Yeah, essentially. But but it doesn't matter. I mean, they, they, they have a market that they want to try to push this to. And so they need to be able to, you know, test it and utilize it and make sure it gets out there. Right. They they have yeah. a purpose behind it. And so I'm yeah. OK with that because they have a they have a vision statement and that's where they're going. Yeah. And, and I think one of the big things about Ubuntu that you have to understand, maybe not early on, but certainly now, is that, you know, the desktop is not their only product. Mm -hmm. They have uh, Snap Core and they are Ubuntu Core. Yeah. Um, and they have all these other things like uh, Metal as a Service and Juju and. Yes. And those things like LexD, um, all of that stuff. They use... Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Also controversial. It is. Yeah. But it used, they all use Snaps, right? And so those are mm -hmm. different like commercial offerings, if you will. And yeah. So... so so getting into Ubuntu, I feel like, is is getting into an ecosystem. Mm hmm. And, you know, for all the baggage that that term brings along with it, because, you know, we we're talking about walled gardens and things like that. Yeah. But, uh, but I don't think Snaps is that bad. Uh, snaps, I think, just in general, are... We're, we're at a pretty good state now. I, I've complained about Snaps quite a, for quite a long time. From a performance standpoint, you mean? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, yeah, not from a philosophical one, I don't because think. Because some people do have the philosophical issue as well. And, and, and because like Because the server is closed source and the store it's not... like the store that delivers things is closed source, right? So, right, and and to be very plainly clear, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the product that you get out of it is still open source, by the way, because yeah, SnapD. Well, I'm just saying like okay, so Firefox, right? That's an open source project. Oh, I see. Goes in, gets crafted as a snap, comes out the other end. You can still look at that, right? So you can see what goes in and you can see what comes out. It's just the bits that happen in the middle where the store happens that you can't see, which I know right. it's, it's, it's semantics in a way. So that makes the whole thing not like the whole supply chain, if you will, is not open. But yeah. the, the things that you put in and the things you get out, they're the same because you can look at the squash uh, file system that gets created outside the other side when your snap gets built. Because you can just download that by itself. You don't have to right. like, install it. You can just download that. As as much as as much as folks don't like to admit, it's it's way more like an app image than yeah. um, than anything mm -hmm. else, really. Because it's compressed, but yes. You, with an app image, you can dump it out and then just like run mm -hmm. the the script inside and then essentially run the app image. That was a whole thing about uh, so Ubuntu not uh, shipping Fuse. Uh, Lib LibFuse 2. LibFuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because now they're shipping LibFuse 3 because LibFuse 2 is unmaintained and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's a standard. Yeah, but that means that app images don't natively work on Ubuntu. But I feel like way more distros are going to be making that switch. Yeah, they are. They are. They are co-installable, but um, for how long, right? 
You know how long? Yeah. Oh, how yeah. long do you want to carry that that uh, you know baggage? I guess if you will of something right. that's potentially vulnerable and not getting addressed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But App Image will figure it out. They will, they will, they will. Uh, figure something else out, or move to Fuse Three, or something like that, and everything oh. will be cool and kosher again. <laughs> uh, they will. They absolutely will. Because if Fuse Two is going to leave in Ubuntu, maybe I, I can't believe that Ubuntu is the most forward thinking. It'll on happen this in one. Debian first, probably, and then yeah. you know, then carry over. And the same with the other yeah, distros. Of course. Yeah, but then, but then Debian will be in trouble at that point from anybody yeah, that runs App Images. So. But uh, so I I uh, I fully uh, believe that App Image will have it fixed before Debian gets rid of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get too hung up on this in the philosophical stuff. Everybody gets that's ramped up on that, but I'm whatever. I'm pretty much the same way. So uh, it was the performance thing on the snaps that really got that's me. Fair. But I think a lot of that has been solved. Um, I still don't like when you do DF or LSBLK or whatever, and you get all this like mess. And the answer to that is, well, just alias a command. No. They did no. take care of that. Did they? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Mm. Not sure which version. Check check it in okay. the newer versions. We'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to this one. One of them might show it. So like LSBLK might show all of the oh. mounts, but DF might not, right? I, I so did they remember. do an alias in the or background? The is that what, did they add the alias magic? Yeah. It could be. I don't know. I don't remember. There was something about it. Once they fix that, I feel like I'll, I'll just be reaching for nothing to complain about with snaps at that yeah, point. Yeah, and that's, well, honestly, kind of a trivial thing in a way. It is, it is, but sometimes I just don't want to see all that mess. And yeah, well, if you like got it. 40 snaps, I can understand that. Yeah. All right, so ads in the terminal. We're talking, I think ads. this one is probably referencing the Ubuntu Advantage, mm -hmm. getting long-term support, yeah. basically... For most people that run Ubuntu at home, this is probably, you're going to see this whenever you do the image magic thing, like you install image magic, and then it's going to be like, oh, you don't get the new version, you get the community version. And if you want the new version that we have patched, you got to you gotta get the Two sauce. things here. Okay. So Pro, like the advertisement, it's not really an advertisement, but we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, when it tells you that, so that is for packages that are in universe, right? Yeah. Yep. Canonical never patched those before. Right. They never did it. It was never mm -hmm. done. With Pro, they are. Okay. So you're getting mm -hmm. something that you weren't getting before. I'm using the wrong words. It's Pro. It's Pro. Okay. Okay. Yep. yep. But yep. Um, you always got main. Main supported for the whole lifespan, you know, five or 10 years, depending on if you... Pay, right. pay pay the extra or not, at least five or ten. And then Universe was always dependent on the community, always. It was never, ever, you know, unless something was really catastrophically bad, then they would either A, remove it or B, patch it. But it was rare that any of those packages ever got updates for security type stuff. Whereas now with Pro, canonical employees are going in and you know patching those things for security and whatnot yeah that's where the notification let you see for image magic um comes in and says hey we've patched this for you and you could get it for free if you had pro right and everybody mm -hmm. gets three right five I think five it's five Ooh, yeah it's better. pretty sure it's five okay yeah and so here's that gets me to my next point is it an advertisement or is it an announcement? You're getting it for free. Well, it is in the message of the day, so it's an it's a de facto announcement. But is Pro free? Pro is free for five. That's where the ambiguity comes in. I think that's where the line is. And so, yep. if the first yep. hit's always free, is it an advertisement or not? I think that's where the distinction is going to lie. With most people? I think, uh, uh, all right, whatever. I mean, I don't know. It's not telling you you need to pay $50 uh, to get. Yeah, and it's not a trial either. The five will last forever. Right, yeah. And it's it's not, so there's no paywall per se. And yeah, sure, they got you on the hook. And then they can, you know, communicate with you about, you know, other services and whatnot. Or they might not. Um, Do I don't they know. email you though? 
I don't know if they do or not. So here's here's the bugaboo with that that I can't. Right. I, I don't know. So like I'm an Ubuntu member. Uh, You're special because I'm you know part of Ubuntu and de facto I'm an Ubuntu member as well, and so I get I get more of those for free. I get fifty for free um, because and anybody else can too if they want to go contribute. Um, here's your chance. You can also Does, get. Do, do translations count? If you become an, uh, an Ubuntu member, so you've got to do some things, show sustained contributions, cool. and then you go through a process basically to become an Ubuntu member. It's voted upon, and um, then 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 there you are. And then you're knighted. And then you you're knighted. The, you get the yeah, whole sure. thing. Yeah. Now, and and, it, and it, there's other perks and stuff too that you get as well. So if you, I mean, if you want to give back and get something more potentially. Then, then here you go. Here's a chance. But so I don't know if they send you marketing things or not. I don't think so because, okay. like, I don't get them. But that could be because I'm already, you know, in a in a in a different way. So I'd have I'd have to ask somebody else on that. Yeah, and I've never signed up for any of this. So, um, you know, if I've installed Image Magic on any of my machines, you know, that's not I, I'm not going to get the Ubuntu updates for that because I I ignore that. Right. I don't know that I've ever because I have a lot of Ubuntu servers running around in this in this uh, in in my local network here. Yeah. And well, here's the other bugaboo. You're only going to get that on the LTS versions, right? So that's all I run. That's all. Yeah, I, run. I know, but not everybody does, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you could run. Oh, you, oh, yeah, because the other ones aren't supported that long. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And they're they're only patching uh, the ones on the LTSs. So oh, you, I say that's all I run. But on on this machine, I'm running 2310. This is the only machine that I'm running 2310 on. Yeah. Uh, every everything else, if if it is a server, if it's doing something for me, I don't want to think about it for five years. So I mm -hmm. put the LTS on no, it. I agree with you. Like I agree with you. I'm not. I'm not saying that but some people do run yeah. the, the interim releases either for testing or Man. just because as a server they're brave anything else that's fine yeah i suppose i mean i guess fedora server exists too and that's nine months right so woo! i know so it's a lot that's, of work that's, that's bleeding edge um right. so I, I feel like i feel like we've beaten the ads to death I, I don't think it's an ad it's a gray area and there is a way to disable it as well yeah, yeah, you you certainly can. So, um, yeah. and then so telemetry. I'm not really sure what telemetry. I always send the telemetry when they ask. You can I'm, turn it off though. I'm I'm the wrong guy to to ask about telemetry. We had an episode about telemetry. We did, and I'm a hundred percent for it in a privacy respecting way. Right? Don't hold on. <laughs> in a privacy respecting way, anonymize me. Don't don't right. Just, throw my my name in there you know yeah, whatever I'm, like any I'm, I'm certain they don't send any of that type of stuff right but when it when something crashes and it's like do you want to send like all of this oh, crap yeah. to ubuntu i'm like yeah man send it because if that means it, even if it is a slim to none chance that something could come out of the back end of that and improve my experience boy i'm hitting send so fast yeah send it all fun fact even if it doesn't crash and it just like something's not right, you can drop down to a terminal and type Ubuntu bug package name and it'll start the bug process for you. That's cool. It is cool. It's the only place I know of that makes it that easy. Yeah. So the only other thing I might I might think that the telemetry thing was was the Amazon thing that yeah, got added. That's in. gone. But that's yeah. It's been gone that, for a few that... releases. That was a mistake. I think everybody oh, yeah. up and down the chain has mm -hmm. um, acknowledged that as a mistake. It could have been done better. It could have been done not at all. But right, you know, <laughs> that one that one is a fixed one. Some money and... changed hands there, and uh, they made some wrong choices with it. Right? That's not the first time that happened. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, when someone makes a mistake, right, and yeah. that they're saying you're sorry. And then they're saying you're sorry and not doing it again. The the second one is the one that gets my that gets my. I'm like, ah, okay, good, okay, good. You got me. And I yeah. think at least in the Amazon case, uh, Ubuntu certainly demonstrated that they have not done that again. Right, right. So you know, he, he goes on. I and historically, Ubuntu has done a lot for Linux. Absolutely, yep, that's There's very true. Good things, bad things gone. Um, and it, and it is what it is. You remember, um, you remember that upstart thing? Whoops. Hey, you know where out. that's still in use? Where? On a Linux system. 
No, the most I don't believe it. Popular Linux system. No, get out of here. I don't believe it. It is. It's on Chrome OS. <gasps> That's right. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it. And they're out here making money off it. I can't believe it. So that's cool. That is pretty cool. Yep. Um, so I I don't know how much I agree with this one though, but I, I just, uh, the quote is, I just don't want to use a system where I'm forced to do something I don't want to do by the maker of the distro. That seems anti-freedom to me. You can uninstall SnapD. I feel like that's, you can. that's where the, the freedom thing is coming from. Uh, because I, I, you can uninstall it and pin that and apt and it'll never come back again. Right. So this is the the flip side of this one. You do have to do some work though. Right. But the flip side of this one is all of the all of the hate that came to Linux Mint when they essentially did that they for you. They do it you. for you. Yeah. Right. They they do not allow SnapD to automatically install mm -hmm. and it and as a matter of fact, if you try to install SnapD on a Linux Mint system, it will prevent you from doing so until you go and take out that pin. Mm -hmm. So the Linux Mint is doing the opposite of this. And I think that's a good thing, but... It's still forceful, right? It's forcing right. me not to be able to use Snap if I chose to. And so... Right, but, but the freedom part comes in where... I can release that pin in Linux Mint and install SnapD whenever yep. I want to. And, this is this and, is not some kind of hard blocker that's been compiled into the system where I cannot without, you know, installing or removing huge parts of the system and 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 you know, making my system unstable. Like it's not that. So, it's just a small roadblock that you have to go past. So, I don't know if that passes the smell test for anti-freedom for me. I feel like because there's a workaround, it's not like if you uninstall SnapD, you can't use your system anymore, right? There's right, not that. Right. So, I mean, at least they haven't gone that far into the, you know, borking your system. It doesn't do that. Yeah. It may exactly. remove some packages that you had installed, and then you've got to find the new way to, you know, get them back installed. Well, it's going to be a actually, more manual process because if you wanted yeah. Firefox, you're going to have to, you know, get it in there another grab, way go and grab we, that tarball baby right right so i mean that's a bit of a pain but that's what you chose to do i guess in a way so yeah you just got to find your way around it anti-freedom i don't think it lives up to that but it does limits your mobility i'm gonna say it limits your mobility how's that yeah it 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 adds up to inconvenience that mm -hmm. is a hundred percent true yep yep i'll buy but, that Something that I'm happy about, the way that he ended out the yeah, uh, the comment was, I've ended up on Linux Mint Debian Edition because Cinnamon and Debian are 100% community-based and 100% user freedom respecting. I got nothing to say about that because that's all true. It is true. They're, they are both community-based. And you know the, the other community-based uh, distro that, that came to my mind? Arch, by the way. Ooh. I wonder what the what the cinnamon situation is like on Arch. I don't, I don't think I've yeah, run but it's that. very bare bones. But you know, you could theme it up any way you want. And cinnamon, no shade. Like use what works for you. Um, I think is the most important thing. Just because like there's a distro that I work on, that doesn't mean I intend that to be everyone's distro. I'm I don't have those kinds of yeah. illusions, if you will. It's oh, not that's for why everybody. there are seven million distros, man. Exactly. No, and so they it scratches an itch, and I like it, and uh, whatever. I mean, you use the one that you like. That's that's yeah. That's just the way it should be. There's a lot of freedom in in the choice. Yeah, I, I find freedom in pragmatism, and I think that's why I mesh so well with Ubuntu. But yeah, man, LMD is fantastic. I'm glad it's been working for you. I'm glad you've had no issues. I'm glad that you're getting on with it. Uh, amazing. I'm, I am a Linux Mint brother. So what can I say? It is a fantastic one to be on. So thanks, Daniel, for writing in. And as you can see, look at the timestamp now. Um, this one probably wouldn't have fit too well in the reverb section because it took so long. This is a good topic, though. You can watch our faces on YouTube now at lus.sh slash YouTube. I can't believe like, they work. It's I still so can't believe short. It. Leo loves how short it is. Oh my it's god! Just great. 
That's that's so silly. But you can also catch all the little history episodes and and catch all the history of things at lus.sh slash tilvids. Oh, um, I just love it when you say it. It's so fantastic. And and if you want to really support us and get more domains that are silly uh, and short, you can find us at lus.sh slash Patreon. All right, Leo. It's uh, it's the browser watch time. Yeah, we got to sneak a little browser watch in here anyway. This, oh, this this shouldn't be too bad. You thought you were getting away with it, you, just, listener? No, no. no. You can't. you can't skip the browser watch. The browser watch is here. Now you got to listen. Three different items to bring up here. Uh, first, Vivaldi on on the flat pack is officially unofficial. Yes. So apparently, it's not fully Vivaldi yet, but. A Vivaldi developer yeah. is helping bring real, actual, live Vivaldi directly to your face on Flatpak. And this is in the wake of uh, Discord is official now, too. I think Discord is officially official. Discord is official. Like Leo said, this is uh, cr- crafted by one of the employees of Vivaldi, but not mm-hmm. officially from the Vivaldi project themselves. The ne- hopefully the next browser watch or maybe the next browser watch will come to you with a it really is official but not yet not it, it, it might yet. be a little further down I mean I don't know so presumably they're testing the waters here to gauge the popularity in releasing an official version I mean that's that's mm-hmm. my guess on that yeah um I did te- I I installed this I tested it out and it's pretty much what you'd expect it's Vivaldi right yeah and so good that's yeah. fantastic that's exactly what yes yay step one is good yeah the the one thing I noticed though is I didn't get the like the setup thing you know how when you first install Vivaldi it does the setup walkthrough thing that uh lets you set your theme and and like all of that stuff at the beginning is it because you had you just Dumped right into, I don't know. No, I installed it fresh on uh, the Fedora setup that I got, Fedora GNOME setup. So it never oh. it never had Vivaldi before. So there were no preferences huh. or any of that stuff. It didn't give you that choice between like the kitchen sink and nope. regular Vivaldi. Didn't give me that. Didn't give me the Aww. strict, uh, you know, like the whole ad strict. That one's important. Locker. Oh, yeah, I went in and, and I could turn it all on and stuff just like normal in the settings, but it didn't offer me up those things out of the gate. Um, equally, it didn't give me my theme either. So I had the the light mode beaming through my eyeballs. Oh, oh my God. I, and I'm always in the dark, man. I'm always in the dark. So like if if that would have happened, I would be, uh. Yeah, I did it. I did it uh, in the morning. So it was like still like. Oh, the sun's still coming up. Yeah. It wasn't up. No, it wasn't up. It was 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, no. You're uh, an early bird, mm-hmm. and wow, that mm-hmm. would hurt. Yep. So, no, I, nah, but it, like, like you can go in there and set all your settings just like you normally do. Good. And I did. I dialed it up to the, you know, the strict settings with the ad blocker and- As you should. It, the the built-in ad blocker, like, I, I do like uBlock Origin, right? I use that on Firefox and most everywhere else. As you else. should. It, yeah. It, well, yeah, but- I will say the built-in ad blocker isn't bad. It's 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 a pretty good it's a pretty good uh, happy meeting. If you had if you had nothing else installed, and you just wanted to run the bare browser, you turn that up, and it and it and it protects you. It really does. It keeps a lot of that pop up stuff from hitting you in the face. Here's the question: mm-hmm. Does it work on YouTube? You know, I didn't test that, and I'm curious. Okay. I am curious. I I you know just in my gut, I feel like it wouldn't. Um, cause YouTube's getting real aggressive. It doesn't. So like, it's not like you block where you block kind of looks at what is sending, you know, it inspects the code, if you will. Um, yeah. where is it's more, more DNS based, like, like you'd yeah. get from your, your DNS based stuff. Okay. 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 So, so quite likely not, but it, it really does help. And especially if that was all you had, I think better than nothing. It's, it is better than nothing. Absolutely. That's that's really cool. That's that's actually really cool. And no, we're not talking about Manifest V3 yet, though Manifest V3 is coming and it's going to break all of your Chromium content filters like you block origin. So get ready for another deep dive browser watch on Manifest V3 when that comes and you're only 
safe bastion is Firefox. I was so going to say, you could just switch to Firefox. You could just do the right thing. But I hope they continue with this, you know, and, and for a lot of good reasons. Like, I love the tab management. Love that stuff. Yep. Yeah, I'm coming around. That's the thing that's getting me, man. That's the thing that's getting me. And so it, it is a good browser on the desktop. It's supported under Linux. It's native now. Like, you have more native options to install it. I think uh, the Wayland support is optional. You can add it, and that means mm -hmm. that it's not blurry in my scaled situation, which yep. is fantastic for me. But they also just released it on iOS. Yeah, on so this is something yeah. that uh, I asked you if you had installed, because I don't have an iOS device. Uh, sure did. And so you said you did. Well, How'd that I, go? I don't know. Do I have an iOS device? I don't know. Maybe I do. But... If I did have an iOS device, um, I would say that it actually runs really good. Um, <laughs> you have you have the same uh, strict tracking type options that you do in the desktop. You have the good. same ad blocking type situation that you have. That could be hard on a mobile browser, right? Yeah. It really can. It really, really can. Um, because I think Firefox does have a very similar situation on well on you can iOS. install you can install extensions on firefox on android on yeah sh 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 quit i know i know you can but that that so well hold on so just quick history lesson when i was on a pixel i had a uBlock origin installed on firefox but apparently there was a time where like extensions went away or something certain extensions work but they i think they they've really opened it up like there's a bunch of them right. now i think yeah now it's just much, much more compatible. Okay, all right. So, yeah, you still can't do that on iOS, but you have browsers like Firefox and Vivaldi and Brave that are building that thing in so that you don't have to do, at least for some very specific... Yeah, well, and as you know, on a, on a mobile browser, you... Yeah, man. Wow, is there a lot of stuff that hits you, hits you in the face, and you, you don't have all that screen real estate to do anything with it, right? I know. It just, it takes over. It takes over your whole screen. We read a lot of news, and there mm. are some websites that put more ads on the page than the others. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, like you'd scroll down that thing in regular browsers, and it's like... And I hate it because I don't, I don't want to, it's not like I don't want to support those things. I, d I don't mind if they're not annoying, right? I, I want to support, I want to support everybody. That's the point. If they're not annoying yeah like we we live in the u.s both dan and i live in the u.s and advertising is just a fact of life around here Has but been. yeah if they're not annoying it's fine right yeah anyway um so vivaldi on ios it's there i was kind of sad to see that they didn't also throw the kitchen sink options in there like because i would like to see the calendar and the mail yeah. application and the mastodon integration well, and like all of that all of that cool stuff but they don't have that on android either so i mean yeah it's on par okay it's on par as, it's, it's good as long as we're same same but i would love to see those even even if they were separate apps i would love to see that cool. those types of things uh available on on I think eventually not... they might get into that. Who knows, right? Especially if it catches on. Yeah. And one of the things that is happening on iOS, because, you know, anytime we talk on a on a Linux show or a free and open source kind of show, you get the eye rolls when the when the iOS comes out. It's true. Because it's not as everybody's open. like, yeah, because, well, on a browser on iOS, you, you only get WebKit anyway. You can yeah. only use the one. In well, that's not strictly going to always be true. Right. With the, the EU's DMA that we covered in a previous episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about how these, you know, kingmakers are having to really relinquish a whole lot of this control over their platforms. And this is going to be one of them. So we know, we know for a fact that the Chromium developers are currently, right now, today, developing a Blink version for iOS. And we know that the Firefox developers are developing a Gecko version That's for cool. iOS. Both of these groups see that the writing is on the wall. Yep. The DMA will, or an extension of, or some other country will push it. The writing is on the wall. This yeah, will change. As soon as that falls, in come the other browsers, right? And they're going to push their version. 
Mm-hmm. And for all of the all of the complaining I see about Firefox and how crashy it is on Android, trust me, I'll be right there with you if it's crashy on iOS. I tell you what, like I had, to, I did have that problem, and ah. I will say, geez, almost a year ago now, I switched back to give it a whirl, and really, I, I haven't, I haven't, like that's it. Firefox on my bra- on my mobile device is the main browser, and it has been the entire time, and I don't get a lot of crashes. I I, I have a lot of tabs um, open. Yeah. Obviously, oh, I always do. Obviously, it puts stuff to sleep and whatever, but I probably average 20, 30 tabs open on my mobile browser. I know that's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's it's painful, but I do. It it doesn't really crash for me. No, I'm pretty happy. Mm. Okay. So the crashy may not be a thing. Okay. So I I need I need people on Android to tell me. Is the crashy thing still a thing anymore? I need I just Install it on your phone real quick. Go to a few websites. Do some crazy things. Run yeah. run a JavaScript heavy website. Yeah. And you really got to tell me, does it actually still crash or is that just something that people are saying because we've said it? Well, and I think it did. I think, I, think it, I think it used I kn- to. And they fixed it. I know it. it did. And there it is. Like I, I feel yeah. like it's good now. But I, I, I really do feel like there needs to be some kind of concerted effort to get people to actually try Firefox again to find out if it's yeah. still actually true. And I think a lot of people will be very surprised with how untrue stuff like this is anymore. Maybe it was true. I, I mean, it definitely was true. But is it still true? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's like we talked about with the Wayland episode that we had. Uh, we just like, Oh, right. You got you to revisit these things. Try them oh. again. Your experience that you had, your experience that you had, isn't going to be the same. Try it again. Form a new opinion. Hey, you can catch all these great topics as they unfold on our Lemmy subreddit, news channel, Discord. Yeah, it's it's in the great places. So lus.sh slash Lemmy slash Reddit <sighs> slash <sighs> Discord slash Mastodon Telegram Matrix Twitch Twitter. We got all the things. Like, come he check us out. He keeps using the short link. I love it. Of course. You made it. I have to ah, use it. <laughs> so good, man. Uh, one thing that I have just recently discovered I can do, which I it's another one of those situations like the short uh, URL that I'm like, oh, why? I Of course that works. Is you can follow the news subreddit or news community on Lemmy from your Mastodon account. That's that's the magic of Activity Pub, right? It's all RSS in the background. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love me some fitter, and and it's it's one of those things that uh, it should have occurred to me because there were quite obviously people responding to comments from Mastodon. Yeah, Mastodon, Pleroma, like all of those things, right? Any any of those, yeah, things, yeah, absolutely. Also, like so, we're on Tilvids, right? Tilvids is another thing that you can follow from Mastodon. You sure can. Yeah, if you don't want to, if you don't want to hear like the insane ramblings of the Linux user space dot mastod- or at mastodon dot social account, you can just follow the Tilvids account and just get the history, right? So yeah, just the shows. Like when the shows drop, you'll get it. You'll get it there in your Mastodon feed. So links at lus dot sh. Now it's time for a reverb focus. This is the this is when you send us the comments and we read the comments and we respond to the comments. That's that's just the whole thing. Simple. So, Ian had sent us some information under our Ed history episode and I really feel like this adds a whole lot of flavor to the history that we dug up, the stuff that we were talking about, and a perspective that I think neither Dan nor I yeah. had at This is way out there because I feel like Ian actually used this stuff at the time. Yeah, sounds like, yeah. Or he's a history nerd like us and digs way deep into random nerd things that I absolutely love. I'm fascinated by this stuff. It, it's, you know, I didn't... I, I, the I didn't early times up. were really interesting. It, it had yeah. to be, you know, buckle up, hang on, because, like, I think that was 
that was pretty exciting, and there was a lot of changes and turns, and it, it had to be a great time. Anyway, not to take away from what Ian's got to say, because Ian's got a lot to say, and it's super interesting. So buckle up, hang on, check this out with us. Ian said, Ed was one of the first editors that can edit files bigger than available memory. And it does this without the use of virtual memory, which was brand new at the time and only really available on mainframe computers, and even then, only a few. Notably, the Atlas, Electrologica, X8, Burroughs B5000, and the GE645, RCA, Spectra, and most of the IBM System 360 and 370 series. Virtual memory was rare as core memory was very expensive and disks weren't generally fast enough to cope with the swapping. Ed did this with a clever trick using a file on the disk as a buffer, keeping track of the changes before finally merging the changes back onto the original file upon a write command. Ed is extensible and probably easier to extend than any other editor. Ed has the facility built in to send text to an external program and capture its standard out and replace the entire line or range of lines with output of the program. Ed was designed to use filter a la the Unix philosophy, so sending text to a filter that the user can quickly create and capture the modified output was designed right from the start. You can also read in the output of an external program. Need a calendar in your text? Read in the output of Cal. And all of the filter scripts you write for Ed will work with VI. Ed is also quite unusual as apart from SED, which is basically an extension of Ed removing the interactive parts. It's unique in being the only editor you can use in a script. Well, Brian Kernigan calls it Ed. And not E-D, so I think that settles it. Hey, listen, I I'm going to say, call it whatever you want, as long as you call it. Gnome. Yeah, that's true. So the way that, uh, the way that Ian wrote it was apostrophe E-A-D, and English is a funny language. Um, E-A-D could be E-D or Ed, depending on if it's like read or read, which is a specifically Great slash bad example of exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> right. um, but I think but I think what he meant was Ed, um, which is what because, we called it and then got called out. Right, right. Well, well, at the beginning of that episode, I the very first thing that I said was, I know it's Ed, but I'm going to call it Ed because we like it. Right, right. You know, um, and if Brian Kernigan calls it Ed or Ed, I I assume it's Ed because. We have said S E D, and I don't know anybody that would call it seed, and absolutely nobody that calls it S E D. So, Ed, it's Ed. Ah, thanks, Ian. I really appreciate that, and I really appreciate the. I mean, slicing through some of the history, man. I mean, the the fact that's a lot of context that that, that really provides that that we didn't have because we didn't live during those times. Ah, man. And I sometimes I wish that I did. And then I look around me and then I pick up my phone and I'm like, nah, I kind of like it here too. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's half in, half out. But at the very least, we have the history to dig up and, you know, experience secondhand, which yeah. is uh, almost as good. And I like talking about it. So it's really, really cool. So again, Ian, thanks for writing this. Uh, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, Dan, not this Dan, different Dan, via our favorite rickety, fully federated protocol email. Okay, it was it was the feedback form on the website, but that still comes over an email to us. Yeah, it does. So I'll take it, okay? I'll take it. Here's what uh, Dan wrote. Since I'm an old geezer, I'll resort to email for this feedback. I love the history of the XFCE project, and it really gives a good insight into what makes people do what they do. I started with XFCE back when first ended up on Manjaro, and it was one of the best implementations in my mind. 
After a year or two on XFCE, I switched over to KDE Plasma, which I'm still using. E email was great back in the day. Today it's ruled by a couple of giant companies, and everyone else th that wants to run their own e email server gets blocked for no reason. P.S. Although I'm old, I still prefer Matrix, Mastodon, and other new stuff. And you know, yeah. it, you know, even though it wasn't this Dan that wrote that, I probably could have wrote some of those things. Um, <laughs> and I'm an old geezer too, so there you go. Yeah, no, that's great feedback. Uh, I think uh, XFC was a really fun uh, episode to to craft and dive into the history. Man, Chicago '95. I'm still running it. I, I absolutely know. love it. It's got Windows '95 vibes on it. It's got XFCE vibes on it. Mm, it's could, so you, good. You can make that look whatever you want. That's the cool thing. But like, yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me was the interaction that you had via email with uh, Olivier mm. Fordan. That that was just oh fantastic. yes, that was that was good stuff. I'm I'm just so still enamored, still enamored with how down to earth he seemed. Yeah, uh, no, and hmm. I'm still very thankful. Um, yes, for for everything that he provided to us. Yep, yep. And speaking of KDE Plasma, you know what I heard? I heard Endeavor OS dropped XFC. So we had just said, I know Endeavor OS is one of the cool opinionated. XFCE distros and well, a couple yeah, days because ago they, they had it like on their live desk, right? That was the way it, you that's what you used to install it. And so right. just announced it. That, just like like as we're recording this on a Tuesday, like, like yesterday like or the day before this weekend. Day or ish. so ago, yeah. Exactly. And uh yeah, no, they don't no no, it's plasma. Way to make our episode dated immediately. I appreciate that. But <sighs> but that's that's just so that's cool. cool so cool. they went plasma. They Which did. is exactly what Dan did. Uh, go from XFCE to... Pl I wonder if that had anything to do... No, no. Because nah, we're talking Manjaro and Endeavor. And They're... I don't know how much stream crossing there is. But I don't imagine there's a ton Listen, outside of... Listen, it's not a terrible choice and it works. So, you know, whatever. Email, though, is just the best way. Just to, uh, I love email so much. I think uh, mm, it's just the absolute backbone to absolute everything. So I guess mm, I don't know that's where this next comment comes in. The the hold on, but the the <laughs> ruled by a couple of giant companies. Not wrong. Google Google is one. Who is the other? Is it Microsoft? I would say Microsoft's pretty big. Okay. I have other places I have email as well. Um, you know, I've got a Proton Mail. Um. Oh yeah, they're good. Uh, I've got Tuda Nota, which is now Tuda. Oh, do you? I do. Oh, is it really? Yeah, they changed. They, so they're they, after the they short domains too. They're they after the short domains because because Proton Mail just did pm dot me. Pm. Yep. Pm. So me. everybody's after the short domains, and sure. well, look at the group that has a short domain now. Mm. Yeah, we're in mm. it. We're That's in us. It. We're cool now. I love it. And so, so I've got those. Those are pretty uh, privacy respecting, I guess, if you will. Right? Yeah. And they do keep the spam pretty, pretty well at bay. Um, no, no issues with that. Um, I've got a throwaway Yahoo account. Um, Ooh. But like that, I use that oh, to, yeah. to s subscribe to all the the junky stuff. And do you so still that, have an AOL account? I don't. No. Yeah, I don't know where mine went. I I don't no. even remember what it is at at the yeah. time now. But I did. But I did for a while. Much, as much junk as I subscribe to with Yahoo, I really don't get a lot of spam. They really are uh, good for junk, aren't they? <laughs> that's just where I toss that. Yeah, I mean, it's been around forever, so who cares? Yep. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few big players there, I guess, in naming all of them. But, yeah, really, Microsoft and Google are probably okay. the two biggest. That makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. Between Office and Gmail, I totally get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, iCloud, right? Like, I don't think they're a huge player. Well, no, they actually must well, yeah, be. I mean, everybody that's got an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, everybody that has an Android is the reason that Gmail is so massive. So exactly. I imagine iCloud's got it. Okay, so, you know, okay. All right, counterpoint, three, not just two. Maybe. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so we got one more email, because I do love email. Uh, Team Linux 01. Mm. Long live the email. I would love to hear a deep dive into Valve's Linux journey, as I've been with them since the beginning of it. 
I enjoy it so much, I want others to hear about the story of Valve supporting Linux, spinning wow. up and then down Steam machines with SteamOS 1 and 2 and the explosion of Proton and finally the smash hit that is the Steam Deck. I'm excited to see what Valve does next. Ooh, I'm, well, I'm, yep. Yeah, I think we're we're on board with that. Yep, a hundred percent. We were just, I was just talking about um, watching the history of Half Life, and because Valve always seemed to be one of the extremely few in a shrinking group of companies that, not saying that they don't make money, be and and their main aim is to make the money yeah absolutely it's gaming but they do it i feel like in a way that doesn't screw us all they don't yeah they don't they give a they give a good product yes yeah and i i'm so i'm 100 percent with you i was with steam from the very beginning i had a half-life before steam existed and when steam came online you remember you remember that color steam was Remember yeah. the the launcher, and it only did the one thing, and it was green, like green. it was camo yeah, it was like a, green. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, it was it was so ugly, but it did the thing. It did the thing. In a time when people couldn't even download the entire game, they were like, "Hey guys, you can download the entire game," and we're like, "I'm on 56k. What do you even? Oh, but you could also do it with the CD. Cool. All right, that's that's cool. I get that. Right. And then Team Fortress came out. Oh, oh my man. goodness. So when I was watching the the the, the Half Life history, when when I was hearing a lot of the sounds that were in the game, uh, I remembered them, especially that stupid dog with the he screamed and then he did the AOE thing. Yeah, um, I remembered that one sure, but like a lot of the weapon sounds that oh, happened yeah. in the game, I remember them not from Half Life. I remember them from Team Fortress. That makes sense. Oh, but those two games. Besides the RTS games, Command and Conquer, Gold, and Warcraft, like those, those were my childhood. I'd spent so many hours rocket jumping. Wrong, of course. <laughs> I, I spent so much time yeah. on those games. So, uh, you know what? Uh, usually, especially when it doesn't, when it doesn't come to something that is like has always been Linux and will always be Linux kind of thing. Um, that I feel like this is going to be one of those exceptions where I, yeah, 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 th yeah, yeah, okay. We, we, You've we, convinced me. We could probably twist our arm into this. I mean, it's got, it's got enough Linux tentacles that I think we can we can spin it to uh, yeah. most people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it makes sense because I just spent half of uh, okay, maybe a quarter of the last live stream on Vivaldia two played yeah. through <gasps> Proton. So, yeah, makes sense. Sounds cool. Well, if you hadn't noticed, uh, two thirds of the feedback, uh, not including the section above, um, <laughs> were email. You don't mm -hmm. actually have to email us at contact at linuxuserspace dot show, but you can do that. You can do it directly. Just open up your Gmail because that's what everybody has, um, and then just type it in the the box where it says two. Right? You can do that. Contact at linuxuserspace dot show. You don't have to though. You can go to, I'm going to say it, lust.sh, and in the feedback forum, for, not forum, form, in the feedback form, you can right. just fill out, fill out your deets and then send us an, a message. And that is also email. Anyway, lust.sh or linuxuserspace.show, go there, fill out the feedback forum. And I keep saying forum. I don't know why I keep saying forum. I add we, the we have one of those too. It's on our Lemmy. Yeah, there is there is a Lemmy for it's an open forum. You can go there and that I will pull in that as well. Because again, very static. Not a lot of traffic there, which is fantastic, unless we get a lot of traffic there, in which case I'm I don't know. Have we'll to take do better it. on that one. We'll take yeah. it. Yeah, no, I see I'll, that on occasion. So yeah, maybe I'll take your feedback. Give me your feedback. I dare you. All right, up next, community focus. And this one, Ooh. I think it ties into, you know, some of the other topics we've had here in the show. Yeah. And in particular, um, you know, are you getting you getting a Steam Deck o OLED, Leo? Oh, my God. It's so hard. I wanted the first one. And I'd convinced myself I was going to buy the low-end one and then just upgrade, 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 upgrade. Little by little, you know, to save my money 
out of pocket at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then they do something crazy like releasing an OLED version mm -hmm. and you you have to go to the middle tier for that one. And I was like, um, I mean, well. The, the pricing structure is the same, but you get. It is. You know, so, you, you know, they got the, the, the well, low end, medium, high. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was looking, I was. You get a lot more bang for your buck, though. You do. I was looking to cheap out and go as low as I possibly could and then work my way up. But now you, you can't get the cheapest one in the OLED. You have to go to the middle one, which right. is anyway, um, not yet, but I'm real close. That's cool. That's cool. Well, if you're looking for good games and tips uh, for what to do on your Steam Deck, um, get, look no further. Steam Deck HQ is the place to go. They've got mm -hmm. you covered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a great website focused mostly on the Steam Deck, obviously, given the name. Um, but they also touch on some of the other new handheld, um, you know, gaming platforms as well. Um, so like, um, yeah, I don't even remember those things. But like the 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 only one I'm interested in is the Steam Deck. I I just have to say I have. Lots of love for that. I've been I've been looking at them though because they're the little Game Boy looking shaped ones. Well, they got the other stuff. ones too that are like the Steam Deck. Like there's a Lenovo one or something, I think. Oh, and then there's another the, um, uh, yeah, Legion. Uh, uh, no, yes, the Le no. Legion. Is it? That's the name of it, is I it? think. Yes, I believe it is. Yes. Not not to be confused with the Legion laptops, I think. But there's no, no, a Legion no, 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 handheld. No. It's a handheld. Yeah. No. It's, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the same form factor, right? There's a couple other ones too. There's another uh, Ayano, I think, is the name of it. Maybe? Okay. I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. Anyway, they're all like the same form factor with the, you know, the whole thing. Um like a switch looking type th type deal, right? It, it, they've just never enticed me because I'm such a like a a Valve um fangirl about everything Valve. So, yeah. like it's yeah. never it's they've never I, I'm just going to get it if if I'm going to get one. Well, and if you if you've got a Steam library, I mean, I think it makes sense. Anyway, Neither here nor there. They touch on some of those and, and some of the things you can do with them. But the the big thing is there are a ton, a literal ton of game reviews that, you know, are focused on one thing, and that's your Steam Deck and the experience you'll get there. They've got I – lo I love it because it's a website, right? And it's got the – they've got the long-form reviews um, with, you know, screenshots and stuff, too. You know, they do have a YouTube collection as well, so you can go check oh. that out, too. Um, but if you just want to go read about some of the things and get some of the feedback about, you know, some of the reviews they've done, go check out this website, Steam Deck HQ. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Is that right above your head? Is that the Steam Deck? Is that the case or is that the Steam Deck? That's my Steam Deck case. Oh, my God. Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. That really is what that is up there. Ha, Ab that's absolutely. Cool. It totally is. That's right there. Yeah, that's my Steam absolutely Deck case. Love it. The Steam Deck's inside of it, by the way. Um, oh, is it? You're brave. That's way up there. Yeah, it is, but it's 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 sitting nicely. Okay. All right. It's it's propped up on the backside. Okay. Well, I, yeah, but but anyway, I I recently took that on a on a trip and had that, and it was great. I played some games. Yeah, we had a live stream, did that too. But, um, you know, I had that along with me, and it, it it passed the time, and it's a great little device. Love it. Okay, so I was talking about the Steam Deck really quickly, mm -hmm. and this is something that I learned on uh, Steam Deck HQ <laughs> that it turns out this is why I know that I don't want the lowest level one. It's I need the second one that comes with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD and, you know, 1280 by 800. Well, okay, blah, blah, blah. What I'm, what I'm, what didn't come with the low end one. And I, I thought it was going to be like one or two features, right? Because that's usually how these things go. No. The middle tier comes with HDR. Yes. It comes with an OLED display. Yes. It comes with almost an entire half inch more on the screen I size. I know, I know. It comes with 90 hertz as opposed mm. to 60 hertz refresh rate. It comes with a smaller architecture on the CPU, bringing in um, better efficiency, better cooling. Yeah, so the, better on the battery, yeah. Better on the, better battery life. We're talking, the Steam Deck itself has been, has been revamped 
to be a little better bit. on cooling in general. Yeah, I, I'm I'm dubbing this the Steam Deck 1.5. Um, so it's essentially it's the, good... the same, but like a little bit of an improvement, right? And yeah. so, yeah. Hold on, I'm not done. Be- it know. comes with it comes with Wi-Fi 6E. Not right. not that I mean, you know. Yeah, it's still pretty good, right? Yeah, downloaded, but still, it comes with a bigger battery, giving you giving you almost 150 percent of what you were getting on the previous ones. This is way worth the extra 150. If you're in the market for a Steam Deck and you're and you're one of the you know guys that likes to cheap out like me because you can upgrade to get all the features, you right. can't do that anymore. Right. The, well, you can, but the, you can't. Yeah. Well, you can't. You can't upgrade to the OLED display. Right. And right. you no, certainly, but if you, pick, you, if you pick the middle line, right, and if you needed like more storage or something, you right. could do that. Like that's an option, right? So if if you don't have a Steam Deck and you want to, you know, you have to go with the OLED. There's too many things. Yeah. Well worth the 150. I think so. I, l- listen, I'm really happy with mine. Mine's not the mine's the first gen, not the OLED. I'm really happy with mine. I have a lot of fun with it. But um, you know, the new 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 latest greatest is it sounds really really good for the people that, you know, didn't jump on board before i mean they're me it seems like they're me. really committed to making it's improvements me. to it though you know right i mean i i feel like that's gonna really it's it's going to last They've well, li- this is how this is the second gen this is the the show of confidence that we we like where the product yeah. line's going and we're going to continue it so i think oh, that's, man. that's Th- great this is this is how you know their success this is how you mm-hmm. know the steam deck's not going anywhere nope. because I mean incremental improvements. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And mm. but but to bring it back to the community focus, that's where these types of websites like that's a, like that also brings some legitimacy. Like you got a whole fan base that's built around just the Steam Deck. Steam Deck HQ. Yep. That's the place to go. One last thing. Gentry folks. Got to do a quick recap of what the heck happened on the last live stream. So, on the last issue of Gen 2 Focus, we made some progress. Gnome was up and running. Well, actually. Yeah, it did. It did. Yep. On, on the past live stream. So, on, on this last live stream, the one we did one week ago as we record this. Yep. And two weeks ago as you're listening to this. Right. We made a bunch of progress. You did. I, I didn't. I don't think I actually was forthright and told anybody this, but I don't have sound. Uh, we never emerged like Pulse or Pipewire or any of that Whoops. stuff. Yeah. And Dan, this might actually be news to you unless you read ahead in the show notes. Um, I might have, but we, but yeah. we did emerge Pipewire. We yep. added a few flags to the make.com file in, we did that. Yep. Um, in yeah. Etsy portage. Yeah, in the portage. Yep. We did a whole at world thingamajig. So we brought in the new stuff and compiled it all. So we were ready to go. And then during the rest of the live stream, we kind of spent the rest of the time as it was emerging, as things were compiling, we spent the, we, we spent the rest of the time chatting uh, to everybody that showed up in the chat and, uh, and actually in Discord. So if you're interested in that, by the way, you could just hop in the Discord. That's just open to anybody in the Discord. Um, and you can come and hang out with us while we, while we do all this weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I took a quick break for all of that to play Vivaldia, which I promised we would do the previous live stream. Yeah, but we really botched that one up, boy. Yeah. Ooh, whoops. I can't even remember now how bad I was at Gen I don't 2. know what we did there, but we failed. It, that, yeah. was the, that was the title of that. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so this last live stream, I did play some Vivaldia two, got past the first boss, just barely. Um, it was cool, but it's it's been something I wanted to do on a stream for a little while. Anyway, so Pipewire apparently wasn't quite meant to be. <laughs> it turns out after the live stream, it was still compiling at the time. As at once we shut down the live stream, everything yep. was still compiling. So, like, I couldn't have known this during the live stream. But mm-hmm. after the live stream was done, I found out a little further down the handbook, it tells you how to enable Pipewire, which is actually a pretty simple process. It was basically just use systemd to turn on the services, and uh, there were a couple sense. of services that you needed to turn on to make it work. 
well. There was no service. So oh. I ran the system control start whatever thing. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know what service you're talking about. And I'm like, mm. wait a minute. I just emerged Pipewire. And Did you? so Did, we, did okay. we miss a step? Okay. So uh and and this is the cool thing about these live streams is that I will only really do the work on the live stream. So all of right. this stuff that I'm saying will still be a problem for the next live stream. So if you have not joined on those, especially if you have like <laughs> a little bit of Gen 2 knowledge that maybe you can help us out, or you just want to laugh at me doing it terrible. Well, there, there you go. Yeah. Either or, whatever. And you you could watch me, you know, try to remote control Leo, I guess, um, with things. Twitch compiles Gentoo is really what's happening. And uh, yeah, no, like I mean, I'm only I only half know more than than Leo. Um, yeah, yeah. Dude, Adam came in there talking like he had been running Gentoo for ten years, man. Like that that was already I, a, a a surprise. I I think I've got a solid week more than Leo, to be honest with you. Seriously, um, yeah, we, no. we are we are Gen two nubs, but what I I am I am surprised by the amount of people that have told me, and it is more than a handful that have told me to do this like tilde AMD sixty four thing. Oh yeah, puts you in testing. Yeah, yeah, or this unstable whatever they're calling it. Yeah, that that is a very scary thing to do. And, and we had that discussion actually. So like you can totally bring in some packages that way, and I feel like that's that's kind of cool. And that that is cool. I am not smart enough to fix the things yet. I am running right like you see it there. It's compiling up, doing updates. Mm -hmm. Um, it's on sixty nine of one hundred eighty nine right now. I, um, I blame the Benadryl. Why it's not that? That's right. fair. So like I am running the testing version because like hey why not like that this is yeah. this is this is part of the adventure. So um yeah I did that. I don't know that I'd recommend that for everybody though because I did bump into a couple of things. And and that's exactly why I've been so averse to like, yeah, let's just throw it in there and compile the whole system again using testing and stuff. No, not I'm not there yet. Give me give me some time. I am yeah. still very much a Gen I two that's green. Fair. You know, I'm a little sprout. You ever played Final Fantasy the oh, the yeah. online mm -hmm. one or whatever? Yep. And when you're whenever you're whenever you're new, you have this little sprout and people will sprout. help you and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, people in Final Fantasy are not like, hey, come to the end game with me right now. And no, not mm -hmm. yet. Nope, not time. Not yet. So, okay. So we emerged Pipewire. I tried to start it. It didn't work. Uh, I, I say we do all the work. I, I did look into it, though. Um, okay. There are a couple of steps in the handbook that it tells you to do. Not in this case, but it was like, if you want to just emerge Pipewire by itself. And so awesome. I did. Okay. And it turns out that the at world um, update that we did did not bring in Pipewire. So okay, that makes okay. I was, that's why I was asking. I think, I think so. Basically, that does the updates of all the packages gets them all compiled, ready to go for when you do install Pipewire. So that's the way. I wasn't sure where we left that. I guess okay. That that's, that's that was. Well, I really was questioning. Like, where did we leave that? Okay, so um. In the handbook, the way the handbook is written, it really makes it sound like it should have emerged Pipewire because mm. in the make.conf file, we specifically add the flag you do. of Pipewire. So things are getting compiled for Pipewire. And the right. handbook makes it sound like it would also emerge Pipewire. And that does kind of track. It does Maybe. make sense. But I was like, it okay. It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the next step is like, if you want to emerge Pipewire by itself. So it kind of makes me think that like, you know, normally under normal circumstances, if you follow the handbook, the Pipewire would already be there. But it wasn't. So I emerged Pipewire by itself. Okay. Which was the next logical step because it was the next thing in the handbook. Yep. I emerged it. And still, no system D service to start. Oh, dang. All right. Well, yeah. that'll be fun to figure out now. So that's that's kind of where we left off. Um, I think, oh, oh, so uh, I did make a couple of changes. So I think during the live stream, everybody was telling me, yeah, cool, just throw it in the make.conf, throw all these f uh, flags in the make.conf. But if you reread the handbook, the handbook specifically says, put those flags in the 
package flags. Yeah, package juice flags, pipe right? Wire. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I put them in make.conf. So then I just. I, it probably doesn't hurt anything, but it makes everything compile against that, right? Right. But I did. Uh, in, in, so you know, this, so this just, is Adam's advice, actually. Adam, Adam made this sound pretty smart, really. Um, he, he, yeah, well. He, he did. So I, I took them out of the make.conf and I added them to the package of specific flags. Um, okay. Really just to j- just to be as close to the handbook as I possibly could be. Oh, okay. Emerged everything. Nothing actually changed. Like nothing was removed well, and nothing was good. recompiled. Like that means you did it right. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, oh, oh, no. Okay. Hold on. Um, because in the middle of this, it was like, Adam, not A T O M, not A D A M, A T O M, something, something error. And I was like, oh, so it took me a couple of times to actually get the package specific use flag syntax correct. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. Okay. I messed yeah. up a couple of times. I didn't actually say it, but I no, did. No, but when it, when it got, when you got done with all that, like, it, yes, it was the same. That's good. Yes. So, so everything was good. Uh, you know, things got recompiled that needed to be co- recompiled, which was pretty much nothing. But um, I, I feel like I have, run it the way the handbook has expected and still no system D service to dive into that then. Yeah. Uh So that's where we left off. That's, uh, this next live stream that we do, um, we're going to be hacking away at Pipewire trying to make the sound go. Cool. We're, we're going to see how that goes so that there's something I did wrong. There's gotta be something I did wrong to make this because everybody else is running with sound. Dan, you've got sound. Adam's got sound. I do have sound. Yeah. Everybody, so like I, I totally so I, watched videos and stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's got sound. I don't have sound. Something is up with my Gen two, and I know it's something super simple somewhere in some configuration file. I got to change, but once I do that, I know I'll have the services and we'll be able to start it up and everything. So yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be a fun, weird, uh, crazy time trying to figure out what the heck I did wrong. Mm. So so uh, in the next live streams. Got to bring in the pipe wire stuff, as I was talking about. Uh, the next thing we're going to have to do after that is network manager. Uh, I have been physically plugging in using DHCP CD to give me an IP. Huh. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want Wi-Fi, and I uh, want yeah, network manager to handle that, because GNOME, no. right? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Then after that will be Bluetooth. Man, I, I, need to, I need to test Bluetooth, too. I have not tested oh. Bluetooth, um, so okay. you got me on that one. When you mentioned that, like that made me think... Okay, we'll test Bluetooth. Um, does the fingerprint reader work? Uh, maybe. Like, I don't know. Does your, your your fingerprint reader work on other things? I've, I don't ever use it, so I don't I don't actually know. Like, I I've, I've got it on the one machine, but it was it used to be my wife's machine and it had Windows on it. And oh, like, the the Wiener Dog one. Yeah, yeah, and so like it was flaky in Windows, so like I oh I'm only expecting that sort of level of you know, I think it's just the resolution on the fingerprint reader itself is kind of horrible. Yeah, so I don't, I, I don't like you. I don't use it either. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm well, glad my, my machine's not fancy enough that, that I'm yeah. that I'm running Gen two on. I'm glad it's not fancy enough for that because it seems like it's hit or miss whether it works just in general oh, anyway. Okay. Yeah. I I don't I don't really use a fingerprint reader to be honest with you. It's cool. Like I so, like when I did have it working, like I I I could use it to update obviously I, you could you use it to unlock the oh, machine oh that is cool you pseudo could, you, and stuff like yeah when it when it prompted you to you know enter your pseudo you just tap that and boom like but it only read about 40% of the time uh, oh yeah because just I, I think it's like I said it just doesn't can't read it well enough whatever. okay fine but I mean maybe but but mine's an Asus maybe yours is a is a Lenovo maybe maybe it'll work better I don't know Eh, maybe. I remember all the fprint D issues we had mm. a while ago. So mm. I won't blame Gen 2 if the fingerprint reader doesn't work, but it would be kind of cool to have it working. So maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Something to take But on. after all that, that'll be all the hardware. That'll be all, that'll be everything. I think once those weird things mm. are done, fingerprint reader optional, um, then I'll be able to sit back, relax, and use the thing finally until I have to emerge the next version of GNOME or something, and then, you know, i got to stick it away for six hours and let it do its thing. But after that, then, again, I'll be good for, like, a good month or something. I, I think stable is pretty chill with And that'll be updates. the end of the season, folks. 
You know, you're actually probably right, which <laughs> means that not really. Gen 2 but history, maybe. Gen, I mean, but Gen 2 history has got to come sometime. And yeah. What a great M- time after getting a full running awesome Gen 2 machine. That well, would I mean, be the perfect time. You know, looking at the clock, we're only like one episode away from being halfway. One away. All right, which brings us to next time. And next Ooh. time next time is going to be the the history of the GNOME desktop environment. And, you know, a few thoughts that we have along with it because we've been testing. I mean, I say testing. We've been running it, not really testing oh, yeah. because, like, we've used it before. Um, we've been running it here for the, you know, couple of weeks and we'll have a couple more weeks. So it'll be a month. Yeah, um, I expect all the crazy comments to come out during the GNOME one because uh, GNOME is extremely, extremely but, polarizing in the and, Linux and we've, world. Sure, sure enough. I mean, but like we talked about, it's kind of everywhere. Um, it's hard to, hard yeah. to, it's hard not to find it in one of the distros, yeah. at least as an option. That there's, there's not going to be a whole lot of fights over plasma. I think there'll be people that like plasma really? and then dislike plasma Wait, because, well, no, no, not, not in the way that gnome is because well, I, all right, I, I feel maybe. like plasma is like, oh, there's too much, too many toggles in plasma, and then so I don't use it. But well, yeah, people don't have these philosophical debates about what plasma is adding and removing in things. Sometimes they do, but most of the time, no. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to find out because, uh, you know, forecasting a little bit, Plasma may or may not be next. We'll yeah, see. I mean, you know, like 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 we said, like these things, they kind of sprouted up at the same time. So they sure did. It's it's why we talk about them. I'm, I'm kind of curious then. We'll see if we get more weird comments about Gnome or more weird comments about Plasma. Well, we'll mm. see. We'll see. That could be tough to gauge. Anyway, um, that's what we plan to talk about. So in between, you can catch us on Twitter and Mastodon, Telegram, Matrix, Discord, whatever. Um, just give us your suggestions. You know, even over on our subreddit to uh, our Linux user space. Um, and, you know, join the conversation. Talk to us. You know, give us more ideas. You know, you can catch all the links and the show notes at lus.sh. Hey, so where can we find you, Leo? On Mastodon, obviously, at Excellent. Leo Chavez, at mastodon.social. It's the best, coolest, federated place ever. Not dot .social specifically, but just Mastodon. You know, Mastodon's cool. Yeah. And, uh, okay, you can yeah, on the Twitter thing, uh, at Leo Chavez, too. So you can catch me at KC2BZ at Mastodon.social or at KC2BZ on uh, Exeter thing too. Anyway, come back in two weeks and join us uh, for more Linux user space. We'll see you then. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. We skipped the fake spot stuff. We're gonna have to come back to. That. I know, I know. We just did. Well, we had no. We had good plenty reason. of time. Yeah, the show was big enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the things that I was looking at was four and a half stars, and you know, five years ago that was that was perfect five stars on Amazon. Mm. Now four and a half stars. The robots have figured out that four and a half stars is where you need to be to be you know oh. purchased a bunch. Now fake spot. I'm I'm not even joking. Like Fake Spot is so good that it takes these four and a half star reviews and it really adds context to it. Right. Dude, some of the stuff I was looking at buying, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. I could probably have this in my house. And I run Fake Spot on it and it goes down to like a two star review. And wow. then I read just the human reviews and it's like, oh, this stuff will just crumble. And I'm like, Wait, what? That that was a good acquisition.